Overtime! Welcome back to Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and in my last couple of videos, I made some more room out here in the garage by uh, taking a couple of cabinets and bringing them down into the basement, which gives me the room that I need to continue working on this joust. Now, there's still a bunch of projects in here, and I'm, I'm behind on pickup videos. I've got about four pickup videos that I still need to make to uh, show you all what I've gotten recently, but I really wanna get back to this joust. It's been way too long. We're really at the, the final stretch of this project, and I wanna get, get it done and in the basement as quickly as possible. So the last time we were working on this thing, we were doing tons of Bondo and sanding and kind of getting things ready for paint. Uh, I've still got uh, plenty of Bondo work uh, left to do. It's not quite at the point where I'm, I'm happy with it. And a couple of things that I noticed that I pointed out at the end of that video, I, I've got some, I don't know if this is delamination or dry rot or something, but basically the, the outer layer at the bottom of the cabinet is kind of separating uh, from the, the rest of the plywood. And I had bond, I didn't, I didn't notice that before. You know, I had used some, some wood hardener to try to you know, help uh, repair some of the damage and then bondoed over everything. And as I was sanding off the bondo, it was sort of, you know, especially uh, at the, the front of the kick plate, you know, at the bottom of the cabinet on the front, uh, definitely, definitely noticeable. So I need to address this. There's a little bit going on uh, over here on the side and actually on the, uh, the other side down here at the bottom, uh, there's a little bit here uh, too. So we're going to address that in this video. I'm actually going to remove a bunch of the, the separated pieces. We'll clean it up. We'll lay some more Bondo down, sand it, uh, get it ready to go. And uh, I am, uh, I'm not going to re-stencil uh, this thing. That's what I've decided. Um, I still don't know exactly what to do with some of the, the damage uh, uh, over here. The other side looks much nicer, but just given the way my, my basement arcade lineup is set up, you're actually gonna see the other side more. But down here at the bottom, I do need to touch up the paint. I need to cover up this Bondo work uh, with brown, obviously, some brown paint. And uh, yeah, in order to do that, I am going to be putting together an HVLP setup. So HVLP stands for high volume, low pressure. It's a way to spray paint uh, using an air compressor onto cars and cabinets and furniture and, and that sort of thing. And it's become uh, increasingly popular in the, uh, the arcade restoration uh, hobby, uh, actually for a while now. Uh, I've never done it before. Uh, it's the technique that I'm going to use to redo the stencils uh, on the Miss Pack project, which you haven't seen in a while. That's been in the background, but yeah, down here at the bottom uh, and then on the front and the other side too, it's just way too far gone. It's too bad that the, the whole cabinet doesn't look as nice as how it does up here. I'm still waiting for those stencils though. I uh, ordered them a few months ago, but they're on back order. So once those get in, we'll be able to, to do that. And I figured this touch up work on the joust is a great opportunity to get that HVLP setup uh, put together and uh, get some practice uh, with it. Obviously something that's relatively you know, low risk. It's not like we uh, are risking ruining some not cheap uh, stencils, but more on that at the end of the video. So what I wanna do right now is remove some of this delaminating uh, damaged wood. Again, I don't know if this is dry rot or exactly what's uh, going on here. So let's uh, get set up to knock out some of that. Um, and what I'm going to use to do it is really just some X-Acto knives. So this is a, uh, a set that I got a while back. It includes a vinyl squeegee that I used to put on side art sometimes and a couple of really nice sharp uh, hobby, kni hobby knives or uh, X-Acto knives, uh, people often call them. So uh, let me get these out of here. And you gotta be extremely careful. These are super sharp, um, razor, razor sharp. And uh, you just, you don't wanna leave these sort of lying around where kids can get to them or you can uh, harm yourself. So basically what I'm gonna do is, you know, cut into the wood. Um, I can actually just snap a lot of this off. Um, yeah, and some of you might be cringing here, but I don't wanna leave this wood uh, exposed. So let me get as much of this off as I can. Anything that's sort of coming off, I want to, I want to take off. And then we'll, uh, we'll Bondo onto a good foundation. 
you know, the Bondo wants uh, solid wood to grab onto. And uh, any of this that's uneven or whatever, uh, we can always come back and repair it, sand it all down, um, and get it back to uh, get it back to tip top shape. So without uh, without cutting myself and without taking off too much of the good wood, I'm trying to remove this material that's separating. Yeah, a ton of it right here. You know, and I was noticing it when I was, when I was sanding, uh, basically I felt the material sort of pressing down, compressing, which meant there was, you know, air underneath it from being uh, separated. I got a little, nice little divot in here that I got to really work the, the Bondo into. So yeah, I'm going to continue at this. I'm going to get all this loose material off and then I'll come back and show you what I got. Okay, I ended up taking off a decent amount of material here, as you can see, but I really wanted to, you know, get all of the, the lifting, you know, arguably rotting stuff uh, out of here and get down to uh, better wood. Uh, did that all the way around all of those spots where I was noticing some issues, like here. Um, that's not so bad. And then obviously a ton on the top and uh, quite a bit over here too. And you can even see all the way down to just raw uh, uh, layers of the plywood. Um, so yeah, this is obviously stuff that I've taken on some water at some point, but I've seen far worse. So I think what I wanna do here is, even though I used a, a ton already, I am gonna add some wood glue here uh, just to get everything you know, nice and solidified um, before uh, applying more Bondo. So, let me go ahead and do that. All right, and you've seen me do this before. Uh, I'm actually down to sort of the end of my uh, Minwax wood hardener, and I'll use that on top, and I've got, actually I might use the, uh, this old stuff, I got more in it. Um, there's just more in that can, and I'm just looking, I saw maybe uh, a little bit here more that's, Lifting. All right, that's probably fine. So uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'll use this one that's more full. And uh, this should dry for about four hours. So I'll come back here later this evening and uh, we'll check it out and then um, yeah, we'll let this stuff soak in here, dry for about four hours. I don't know what the wood hardener is going to do to the, the Bondo that's already there. Hopefully it doesn't hurt it. But we'll let this soak in real nice. All right, I'll get some uh, corner here. And get some into there. Okay. All right. Get some on the sides. Messy, messy stuff. Oh, and it's running. really want to contain this stuff over here and you can see it takes the takes the black paint off so yeah I want to contain it to where we've got the problem but the stuff just wants to go wherever it wants to go right it is a liquid after all but we can redo all this black paint however we need to all right, so I used the, uh, the rest of those two cans or bottles of uh, wood hardener.
got it all in there. And again, this, this stuff wants to run all over the place and strip the, uh, the black paint. But um, yeah, I'm gonna let this dry for about four hours on all three sides. And uh, I'll come back once this wood hardener is dried and we'll put some new Bondo on. All right, the wood hardener has been drying for about four and a half, five hours. So I've got a batch of Bondo all whipped up and I'm just gonna come in here and start uh, applying it. I'm gonna really push in and work it into the, the wood here. Yeah, because there's a, a couple spots where it really needs it. I've got to build this back up because of all the material I removed. I want this to be flat and flush, which means I gotta build it back up. All right, that's going on pretty good. I'm gonna whip up another batch, uh, continue filling it out. I'll do all the sides and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, there you go. The Bondo went on pretty well. I am fairly happy with this. I added a little bit up here as well, just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Got a ton in the back over here, really feathered it out. And uh, yeah, so basically what I'm gonna do is let this dry, we'll see what it looks like tomorrow, and we'll either be sanding or uh, possibly applying uh, another application of Bondo. So stay tuned for that. All right, it's the next day. Everything is nice and dry. The Bondo is completely dried. And I think it looks pretty good, so uh, I'm just going to come in here, we'll get it all sanded up, and uh, hopefully we'll be in good shape. Uh, I've got my mask, I've got my gloves on. Uh, we're going to start with uh, 80 grit and then come over it with 220. I think I have some super high grit too if I need to. But uh, yeah, things are looking pretty good, so let me go and knock out the sanding and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, all done sanding, and uh, I think it came out pretty good. Uh, like I said, I used the 80 to knock everything down, and then the 220 to make it nice and smooth, and I'm really not feeling much, at least through the gloves, um, anywhere. Uh, we are over here. Yeah, and still it's a little bit ugly, but uh, yeah, the paint should cover it up. Um, you know, it's not perfect, I could spend you know, uh, multiple days here, and you can even see some of the bare wood where I had to eat into it, but we'll cover all that up. Yeah, I could spend, you know, countless days just going through and, you know, getting it super, super perfect, but uh, I don't have the patience or the skills really to do that. You know, uh, a B plus, A minus quality is good enough for me. I even use the rasp to take out uh, some of the edge here, which have been uneven and, uh, now it's a lot better. Still not perfectly straight, but a lot better than it was. And uh, the only thing I'm not super thrilled about is up here on the front, unfortunately, there's a couple of spots, and like this is this is smooth, you can't feel it. But there's a couple of spots here where, um, let's get it real close if it'll, if it'll adjust, where, um, you know, it's just lifting. And I don't know if there's an air pocket underneath, right? And I can push in, and then it comes back out, and there's a couple of them over here. Um, and I don't know what to make of this. I don't know if there was some moisture trapped uh, from the rotting wood or, or what. I mean, this has been sitting in my garage for like nearly six months, so you'd think it would be dried out, but uh, I'm not quite sure what to do. I don't really want to bondo over this again. You know, if this was how it was 
uh, if this was, you know, unrestored and it was like this, I wouldn't bat an eye. I wouldn't think twice about leaving it as is. It's just a little bit strange to me. There's a little bit of stuff here that's not quite perfectly uh, filled out. So I don't know what I'm going to do. If you've seen this before, if you know what this is, if you've got any suggestions on how to deal with it, let me know. You know I do have that sort of Bondo sort of, you know, what's it called? The skim coat sort of, you know, pinhole sort of stuff. So I don't know if I'll use that here. It is the front, uh, but it's the bottom. So anyway, uh, I think I'm good with sanding for now, which is good because the sun's going down. And uh, yeah, so uh, not bad. Happy to be basically done with sanding. Well, as you can see, <laughs> I'm not done with Bondo. Uh, I couldn't leave well enough alone. I was really, I, I just did not like those, those bubbles, those parts uh, uh, popping up. And I started picking at it with um, my X-Acto knife and uh, ended up digging out uh, these pretty gigantic holes, especially here and here and smaller ones. And underneath, right, the Bondo just wasn't cured. It was still soft. It smelled a lot like... Uh, the, the wood hardener. So I don't know if there was just so much wood hardener and it wasn't fully dried, even though I had let it, you know, sit out for almost five hours and I had let the Bondo, you know, dry overnight. It just, it just wasn't fully dry. So yeah, ended up digging, digging all of this out. I was saying to uh, Liam, uh, AKA 64 bit from the Retrobotics channel on YouTube and the, the coin jam podcast that I do that this sort of looked like a somewhere in between a, uh, a root canal and an appendectomy. But uh, yeah, I think I've gotten most of it. Again, I don't know if it was rotting wood that was just retaining moisture somehow, or um, you know, the wood hardener wasn't dry, or the Bondo wasn't dry, and it was just you know, uh, bubbling up, right? So I think I've gotten all of that out. And uh, my strategy now, I'm gonna um, do at least two coats of, of thin Bondo, let it dry. So I'm gonna put one coat on, you know, thin coat on, let it dry for a couple of hours, come back, put a second coat on. Hopefully that'll get me back to, um, you know, level. And then I'm going to let the Bondo dry, the full application dry for at least 48 hours. I have to leave town on a work trip. Uh, it will take me away for, for two days. I'll be back and finish this video uh, before, before releasing it. I'll be back home before then. But uh, yeah, so why don't we go and uh, get some Bondo mixed up over here. And um, let's see. And this weird, uh, this weird setup over here is actually a tube without a frame or, or chassis or anything that I got in a recent pickup, and I'm just sort of trying to make room to protect it uh, on the cabinet. So um, yeah. Uh, so let's pour out just a little bit of Bondo, and I always make way too much. I love that, love that smell of Bondo. My wife can't stand it. So, making a mess already. Again, I'm going to do some some pretty thin applications. Got almost the end of this hardener. Probably using too much, but then I have I always have a hardener left over at the end of a, the end of a can. So, you tell me if I'm using too much or too little. And I read somewhere that it's actually much better to use too much hardener than too little. Um, I don't know if that's accurate or not, but, and somebody was also saying that you got to fold it. Um, don't stir to avoid air bubbles. And I don't know if that had anything to do with the issues I was having, but I figure if it was air bubbles, if it was the way I was stirring or mixing the Bondo, uh, it would have affected all the sides, not just the, the front. So I don't know what's going on. That was also the side that was obviously laying flat when I applied the, the wood hardener, so it didn't get to, to drain or drip out. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, a thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of grasping at straws, figuring out what's going on there. If you've ever seen that before yourself, that that bubbling in the Bondo, and you know what's causing that or how to how to prevent it, how to fix it, Please let me know. And I do have got this, um, this Bondo glazing and spot putty, but that's really for pinholes and, and not the issue that we're dealing with here. So, all right, um, here's my Bondo ready to go. And let's move over here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. 
Uh, right. You've seen me put Bondo on before, but uh, yeah, sorry about the bumpy ride. So I'm going to come in here with relatively thin, relatively thin coat to start. I've got a bunch to, to fill in here, so I'm not going to try to do it all in one pass, but let this dry a little bit and then come back and uh, fill in the rest. Maybe that'll help with the drying process. I don't know. But uh, I really want to get, get going with this project. I've got, I still got 10 or so projects out here in the garage. Not all of which have I introduced yet. So I've got some, some pickup videos that are backed up uh, and waiting to be finished recording and edited and released. But I really want to get this uh, done. And I've got some, some stuff I just bought that I'll show you in a couple minutes that I needed for the Joust and also for the Miss Pac-Man. All right. Um, and I got to build this edge back up. All right. I think that's uh, kind of okay for now. Like I said, I'm going to let this dry for a few hours. And... Uh, I'll come back before I go to bed and uh, throw another batch on that will hopefully be what I need to finish the job. So while that next layer of Bondo is drying, I wanted to show you the HVLP setup that I'm putting together. So HVLP stands for high volume, low pressure. It's a way of spraying paint onto cars and cabinets and furniture and, and that sort of thing. And it's, uh, you know, it, uh, other than other types of, of, of spraying from what, what I understand, HVLP is really efficient and gets most of the, the paint onto the target, onto the cabinet rather than it all going sort of into the air. And uh, it typically requires a specialized spray gun and a large compressor. And the compressor that I have is like a four and a half or six gallon uh, tank, and it doesn't have the capacity that you need for HVLP. And again, HVLP stands for high volume, low pressure. So you don't need super, super high pressure, but you need lots of volume, lots of airflow going through and putting the paint uh, onto the target. And you know, those types of large compressors can be rather expensive. And I wanted to do this sort of on a budget, uh, just because you know, this is, you know, I've, I've worked on lots of arcade machines, lots of arcade cabinets, and I've never had to do this before. Um, I need to do some touch up on the joust, as you see I'm working on, and I'm gonna redo the stencils on the Miss Pac-Man. So I figured now is a good time to do that, but again, I didn't wanna go crazy and spend a ton of money. You can kind of go nuts here. So I went to Harbor Freight, or as Liam calls them, Horror Freight. So I don't always shop here. I actually do uh, quite a bit. I get like um, moving blankets and tarps and, and uh, stretch wrap and, and that sort of stuff, which is great because they're you know, relatively inexpensive, but you know, uh, um, Harbor Freight's known more for having, you know, very low, low price tools. And, you know, if you're, if you're doing this sort of thing professionally, you're using this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis and really beating on it, you might want to go with higher end, more professional grade stuff. Uh, but if you're like me, this is a hobby, you're trying to do things, you know, without going crazy price wise, um, you know, you can get good results. And again, this is not an HV, HVLP setup that's going to work for a car or a very large amount of painting. Um, but even, you know, the most I'm going to be doing is a couple of sides uh, of a cabinet, right? So hopefully the tank I got is, the compressor I got is big enough where it's not going to run out, right? Um, so anyway, you can do a lot of research, whatever, on, on how to do HVLP. And this is just sort of the setup that I went with. Uh, Harbor Freight was actually having a spring Black Friday sale. Uh, and if you were part of their Inside Track Club, which is like a membership, you got sort of four-day early access. Um, Today is actually the 11th of April. And this video is probably going to come out on uh, Sunday the 16th, so you might be able to catch the end of this, this Black Friday sale in the spring. Um, the biggest thing that I was looking for was uh, uh, the compressor. Like I said, I needed one, you know, big enough for HVLP. And some people would argue that, you know, 21 gallons really isn't big enough for HVLP. But again, I'm not going to do a car. I'm only doing some relatively small cabinets. So that should be okay. And this, you know, is already a relatively inexpensive one because it's not that catastrophically huge. Uh, but it was 50 bucks off, which was, which was great. Uh, I got, uh, this is the uh, HVLP 
spray gun that I w went with, sort of the, the purple gun from Harbor Freight, which is what everyone uh, uh, recommends on the claw forum. So this says it needs uh, six cubic feet per minute at 40 PSI, and I guess 40 PSI is what you, um, you know, run, the, run the compressor at. And this uh, compressor supports five uh, uh, cubic feet per minute at 40 PSI, so it will eventually run out. The tank won't be able to keep it sort of uh, uh, continuously. It will have to click back on and, and, and refill the tank, but I should be able to get, certainly for the Joust, and possibly even for the Miss Pac-Man, uh, all, all of the paint that I need without having to, to wait. But worst case scenario, we sort of wait for it to fill back up and, and do it again. Uh, a couple more things that I picked up. Uh, so I got this, uh, this stand, which sort of makes it easy to, to fill the paint uh, uh, into the reservoir, into the cup, uh, without sort of having to you know, use three hands and you'll pour it through a strainer. And I got these strainers here. I don't really know if this is necessarily the right size, the 110 to 120 mesh, but uh, again, I'm, I'm learning here. Uh, what else did I got, uh, get? I got an extra um, regulator that I'm going to try attaching uh, to the gun itself just to make sure I'm getting exactly the right air pressure going into the gun. I actually got a second one just in case. And these things are 10 bucks on sale, which is crazy, crazy, crazy cheap. Uh, I got a couple of extra um, air hoses. Um, I got a, uh, whoops, dropping stuff. I got a, a filter, um, so this connects to your line and makes sure that there's no uh, uh, particles or water or moisture going into the line because you don't want that going into the paint. Uh, obviously, I got, uh, this is kind of a, a heavier duty one, uh, I got a second smaller dryer slash filter really to kind of go crazy and make sure there's no um, moisture in there. And what dropped, I actually got a, they had these on clearance for like 75 cents each a bunch of these like disposable filters. So there should be no moisture in the line, no moisture in the spray gun. Um, so yeah, so uh, like I said, this was 50 bucks off. These spray guns were 10 bucks a piece. So, you know, kind of doing this on the cheap. And again, uh, I have friends who have, you know, that, that you know, uh, their family is into like auto body, you know, like they do that for a living, right? Like auto body repair. So they're painting, painting cars all the time. And I'm sure they would laugh if they saw this and said, what the heck are you doing, Charlie? But, you know, for relatively small projects, trying to do it on a budget, um, I feel like this was uh, the way to go. And this is similar to, like, Liam's doing his joust uh, right now with HBLP. He's doing a complete re-stencil. Uh, uh, he should have that video hopefully hopefully up soon. Uh, he does have a, a different brand uh, for the compressor, but I think his is also a 21-gallon. And most of the rest of the stuff, he's using the same... Uh, the same gun, the same uh, the same types of uh, filters and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. It'll be an experiment. And if it completely gets botched on the joust, well, then I'll figure out something else to do for the Miss Pack. I am not going to be painting in this video though. We're just doing the Bondo. We're getting it prepped. I might do, I might throw some primer on, but uh, I'm not going to paint just yet. So anybody watching this, who does know a ton about HVLP. If you see something in here and you're like, Charlie, absolutely not, do not do that, huge mistake. Let me know, leave me a comment, send me some sort of message, right? And I can always return this stuff. I do think the, the, the guns are probably the way to go. You know, this, this uh, compressor might be on the small size, uh, but it's, it's a giant step up price-wise to get anything much uh, 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 bigger, right? Getting into the 30 gallon and beyond range is just, it, it will take up a huge amount of space in the garage. And I'm never going to do anything larger than, you know, a side of an arcade cabinet. So, uh, yeah, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think about this setup. Um, and if you don't know anything about this stuff, well, then we'll be learning together. And if it works, you'll be able to, you know, potentially copy uh, what I did. And if it doesn't work, you'll be able to learn from my mistakes. Okay, I've got one more and hopefully the final application of Bondo on the front of this cabinet. And it looks kind of okay, but you know, really time's gonna tell. Um, I feel like I used a little bit too much um, cream hardener and uh, it was a little rough sort of going on at the end. Usually it gets nice and smooth, but we'll sand all that out and hopefully this will uh, dry all the way through. Uh, tonight, it's, uh, it's Tuesday right now. I'm gonna let this dry until Friday. I'm not gonna touch this until Friday probably early evening at the earliest. So what's that, a good uh, uh, three days of drying. So we'll see if that does the trick. We'll come back, 
we'll sand this down and hopefully we'll be ready to uh, move to painting. The other sides are good. Again, these aren't perfect and you can you know, kind of see it in the lighting here. You know, it's uh, certainly not perfect on that side, nor is it perfect uh, over here. I think this side is a little bit better actually, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> not bad for a 40 year old cabinet. And I'm just hoping that this application of Bondo dries all the way. We don't get any kind of bubbling, none of that kind of nonsense. And uh, we'll be good to go to the final step, which is paint this cabinet, touch up the paint, and then we're looking at uh, reassembly. So yeah, and with all that, the end is definitely in sight for this project. So stay tuned. Here we go again. It's actually Saturday, early evening. I'm dodging thunderstorms, but I think I got a good break in the action. Uh, so this has been drying for, what does that make it? Uh, three days, four days, something like that. I did actually throw a little bit more Bondo on the left side here, just cause I wanted to smooth out those low spots. But uh, yeah, let me throw the mask on and see what we get from sanding this time. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers would be appreciated. Okay, I think it came out pretty good. We're nice and smooth on this side. Uh, I really don't feel much, certainly through the glove. There's a couple of, you know, dimples or, or nicks all over, but I'm not gonna worry about that, especially since it's the, uh, the side. I could drive myself crazy trying to get everything absolutely perfect. And even, even the original, where I'm gonna leave it, it has plenty of uh, bumps and bruises. And I'm pretty happy with how the kick plate uh, turned out as well. Uh, we're losing sunlight here, but uh, yeah, I think we're, we're nice and smooth. Uh, I didn't really see any of those kind of soft spots or bubbles really uh, forming. I thought for a moment I saw one here, uh, and I don't know if we can zoom in, but um, it kind of went away. And the only reason I saw it is because I really kind of went in deep here because there was, I could see from the, the edge, there was a bit of a bow in the middle. So I really went through and you can see, you know, kind of layers of Bondo, maybe four layers of Bondo. Uh, that I've I've burned through, and uh, yeah, I thought momentarily I saw a bubble or soft spot forming, um, but I think it's actually fine. The only thing is right here, you can see there's a, a bit of a low spot, so I think I might come in with just a little bit just to kind of fill this in, and maybe I'll skim over one last time, uh, you know, just because they're, again, they're these little sort of divots, uh, where if I, I didn't have this spot, I would probably just use that uh, glazing and spot putty Bondo. Um, but I think I will use sort of just a little pass of the normal Bondo here, maybe skim over uh, the rest one last time, let that, uh, let that dry, and then I'll sand that back out. But I'm gonna do that on my own time uh, because it's uh, Saturday evening, I need to edit this video. I try to get them out on Sunday afternoons, early Sunday afternoons, East Coast time seems to be uh, the best time for me to release videos right now. But uh, yeah, nice and smooth here, no real issues. Um, you know, some imperfections, but if it was original, I would just leave it. Uh, and I don't want to make sort of this part of the cabinet perfect, uh, which won't mass match the uh, the rest. So yeah, I think I'm going to wrap up this video here. Uh, I think this is part 10 of the joust restoration. And, you know, from the looks of it, it's still a mess, but we're actually real close. In the next video, uh, I'll throw a bit of primer uh, uh, over the Bondo, uh, and then we'll try out that HVLP setup. So again, you know, take a look at that part of the video. Let me know what you think of the setup, and if you, you know, have any sort of experience with HVLP, you know, let me know if I'm on the right track or not. Uh, you know, in the next day or so, uh, you might beat me uh, to do it. So, or uh, give me some feedback before I uh, make a huge mistake. But uh, yeah, so we'll do the painting in the next video, hopefully. Um, we do need to do black uh, on the front, cover all this up. We might touch up some other parts of the cabinet up there. Uh, obviously the brown uh, on the sides, I think I'm gonna take a, a chip and uh, get it matched uh, rather than use the paint codes because you know those paint codes I think are designed for perfect uh, jousts. So uh, yeah, we'll paint in the next episode and then it'll be reassembly. Uh, well, actually I might have to uh, repaint the coin door, uh, I think. Uh, but then we can start putting it all back together. I've got a new uh, speaker grill. We'll put all this back together. I've got to fix the uh, fix the um, the marquee light here, the fluorescent light setup. We got to put a ballast back in and, and wire it back up. Uh, and then we're just basically putting it all back together. So uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Overtime Arcade. Uh, 
<laughs> if, if you've watched this whole thing and you haven't subscribed, then you need to subscribe because you clearly enjoy what I'm doing. So, you know, thanks for all the great feedbacks, the likes, shares, comments, subscriptions, everything. I appreciate all of it. It's uh, really what, what helps keeps me going. It, it's, it's what help, <laughs> losing it. It's what helps keeps me going. Is that right? It's what helps keep me going. Or it, it helps keeps me going. That's what I'm trying to say. It helps keeps me going. It helps keep me going. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Charlie. This is Overtime Arcade, and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.